Good day, everyone. Today, I want to share with you a way that you can help keep yourself organized and focused as you're building out your projection show. And you can do that by using timelines within Resolve to break your show up into individual scenes. And this is a really good thing to use regardless of which method you're using to build out your show in Resolve. Whether you're doing it the way that I've shown you or you're doing it the way that Dan Phillips puts his together, everybody that's building a show in Resolve can benefit from doing this. So here you can see I have my mask up and I'm gonna bring down the audio track that I want to use for this show. I'm going to be using the audio track as a guide for where my scene breaks are going to be. So it's easy to think of it as scene one will be the verse and scene two will be the chorus and scene one and scene two are going to look completely different from each other. If that seems a little bit confusing, just hang in here for a minute. I'm going to show you an example of what that's going to look like. So you're going to want to trim your audio track at the point you want your scene break to occur. Don't worry about trimming down your masking layers at this point, whatever you're using. In fact, you don't even have to have a mask ready to go. Just the audio track is what you need and you need to know where you're gonna make your cuts. Since I have all my masking, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all the mask layers and that first section of audio. And then I'm gonna create a new timeline that I'm gonna call scene one. And I'm gonna paste everything that I just copied into scene one. Again, if you don't have your layers, you're just copying your audio into scene one. If you do have your masking layers and you've pasted them in, this is a good time to trim them up. And I like to give five to six seconds past when my audio cuts off so that I can take advantage of some of the transitions that are built into Resolve. And I'm gonna show you towards the end of this how that works. An important note about those overhangs, everything you put into that scene, make sure it goes all the way to the end, including that six second overhang. So now you wanna go back to your first timeline and grab that second half of the audio track. Now I'm keeping it simple here just by splitting the audio in half. So now just like before, I'll grab every one of my masking layers. I'll grab that second half of the audio and I'll create a new timeline and I'll call that scene two. If you paste in your audio and it's not all the way at the beginning of your timeline, move that over because you want that audio to start at frame zero on that timeline. Now for the purposes of keeping this simple, we'll treat this as the end of the show. We won't put that overhang in that will allow for a transition. We'll just call this done. So now we have a scene one and a scene two, each on their own timeline. Could we have kept this all on one timeline? Absolutely. We could have done the same cuts, kept them on timeline one, and gotten a very similar result to what we're about to do here. But I think this is a great way to do it because it helps you keep your focus on one scene at a time. And that's something you absolutely want to do if you're getting really intricate into your show build. So for a small scale example of this, I've changed the door color on scene two and left it exactly as it was on scene one. But that's a nothing burger. So let's build out something that will be drastically different between the two scenes. For scene one, I'm gonna use elements from the Christmas Vacation tutorial that's available on Dan Phillips' projection course. Yes, I paid for it. You should pay for it too. It's a good course. All right, so we have Christmas Vacation ready to go. Of course, I didn't do the full tutorial here, but we have a Christmas theme for scene one. And now we could move on and focus on just scene two, not getting distracted by the previous scene we put together or scenes we have after it. And then we get one more trick up our sleeves by having these scenes split. I'm gonna go ahead and render scene one. If you're done with that scene, you're not gonna make any more changes to it. Go ahead and render it. 
using your preferred settings, make sure you're exporting the audio with it because that's very important to the next step. But go ahead and create it. Once that's completed, bring that back into Resolve. And that pre-rendered file is going to take the place of the scene one timeline in your final render. So I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to build out a scene two using this audio track. I'm going to cheat a bit when I do that. But from there, I'll show you what that final timeline is going to look like. Okay. Scene two has been rendered out. So we're ready to pin this up. Since we got all our scenes rendered out, ready to go. We're going to go ahead and create a new timeline. And we're going to call that Final Cut. And the first thing we're going to do on Final Cut is bring down the original audio track that we started with. And then we'll grab our pre-rendered scene one and bring that down here onto the timeline. Now, of course, scene one's going to go all the way at the beginning, but I'm going to show you a little trick here. Select the audio and video for scene one, then select your original audio and right click on that original audio file and then select auto align clips based on waveform. Because the waveforms of the two audio tracks are the same, Resolve can automatically sync them together where they're supposed to go. So we'll do the same thing for scene two. And that brings it right up against scene one. So as we play through it, you can see scene one and scene two are so radically different from each other. It would be a bit of a challenge to try to do that all on one timeline. Not impossible, but a little bit of a challenge. Now, one of the main benefits to doing it this way is we get to use these fancy resolve transitions because remember, Scene one, we had an overhang there of five to seven seconds, and that's what Resolve wants in order to make those transitions work. If we had cut these on the same timeline and didn't account for that, we wouldn't be able to use these transitions. And then once your final cut is completed, you can render this all out. And it's gonna go pretty quickly because you've already pre-rendered every individual scene. All the heavy lifting is already done. So a practical real world example for my upcoming Halloween show, you can see how many scenes I've split up and divided. And so far it's had a pretty good return on investment for me. So I wanted to share that with you all because it's gonna help you. It's gonna make things easier on you. Yes, you're doing a little bit of upfront work, but it's not that much. So I genuinely hope you get some use out of it. So that's the end of this little tip. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I will see you next time. Take care of yourselves.